How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Pilot Patriot channel. One of the main things we talk about here on this channel is being prepared. And I think a lot of you guys have that same mindset. We want to be prepared for pretty much any situation that could come up. And you probably have all kinds of preparations at your house for any type of emergency. But outside of your regular emergency items like jumper cables and a jack, a lot of people neglect their vehicle. Now your vehicle is with you 90% of the time. And whether you're one mile from home or 500 miles from home, what you have in your vehicle may be all you have to get through whatever the situation might be. So in this video, we're gonna talk about your truck EDC, what kind of things you need to keep with you at all times and how to build out your truck so that you're prepared for pretty much any situation. Alright guys, so in this series we're going to be talking about your truck EDC. That's everything that you carry with you on a daily basis to get you through not just everyday situations, but emergency situations as well. We're also going to be talking about some accessories and modifications that you may consider for your vehicle just to aid in being prepared for whatever situation you might find yourself in. Behind me here is my 2022 F-250. And we're gonna be doing a full walk around of the truck. We're gonna look at everything that I've done to it and all the gear that I have stored in it just to help give you some ideas and help make sure that you can be as prepared as possible with your vehicle. This is gonna be a two part series. First, we're gonna be doing a full walk around of the whole vehicle. We'll look at what capabilities it has, what accessories and modifications that I've done to it to make it more prepared. We're also gonna get on the inside and take a look at what kind of gear I keep just in the main cab of the vehicle. And in part two, we're gonna take a look inside the truck bed and in the toolbox where most of my emergency gear is gonna be. And as always, I will have links to everything we talk about in the description below if you wanna get any of it for yourself. But before we get into this, guys, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. Now we're not going to spend too much time talking about all the details of each individual item. This is going to be more of a show and tell just so you can see what kind of stuff I have to give you some ideas. And before you guys start commenting, yes, I know my truck is dirty. I do truck things with my truck and I didn't want to make this video with a freshly detailed truck. I wanted to show you my truck as it normally is. So comment away, but let's go ahead and get into this and we'll do a full walk around of the outside of the truck. All right guys, now right here at the front of the truck, first thing we're gonna talk about is the heavy duty bumpers. This is the Stealth Series bumper from Road Armor. It's a really heavy duty steel bumper that's gonna help protect the front end of my truck from animals, accidents. It's also gonna give me the capability to push things out of the way if I need to. We'll also have some additional lighting. I have the rigid D-Series fog lights on both sides. A bumper like this is also gonna give you a lot of capability when it comes to recovery. So you can see I have two D ring shackles on each side. And right there in the middle, I have the 12,000 pound winch from Road Armor with an upgraded flat link recovery hook from Factor 55. Now, before we move on from the front of the truck, there are a couple things here under the hood that I want to talk about. This truck has the 7.3 liter Godzilla gas motor from Ford with a 10 speed transmission. And there are just a couple things in here I want to talk about. I do have the cold air intake here from S and B. And when you're talking about preparedness, there is one main concern with these modern vehicles and the threat of EMP and damage to your electrical system. So to help protect my electrical system, I have installed the EMP shield. This is gonna detect EMP events and protect the electrical systems and computers here on your truck. And I have done a full video on this product if you wanna check it out. Moving on up here, I have installed some hood lights. These are the D-Series floodlights from Rigid. I have those mounted on both sides. And these are wired to an upfitter switch here in the truck so I can turn them on and off whenever I want to. Just to add some additional lighting if I'm off-road or if I'm concerned about deer coming into the road or anything like that. Moving on to tires and suspension. If you truly want to be prepared, you need to also be prepared to go off the pavement and have a little bit of off-road capability. So my first suggestion there would be to make sure you have a vehicle with four-wheel drive. But you also want to make sure you have a good all-terrain tire. So what I have here is the 35-inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers. These are 295-65-20s, and they fit perfectly here on this leveled truck. They've lasted a good long while, and they're pretty aggressive without being so aggressive that they compromise ride quality. 
You should also consider some type of upgraded suspension system. On my truck, I had the three inch Carly backcountry system, and that does a couple things for me. It levels my truck out, gives me a little more ground clearance. It gives me better ride quality on road and a lot more capability off road. Now I also have my windows tinted here on my truck. That's not only gonna give you privacy, but it's also gonna give you some security so people can't look into your truck and see what you have going on in there. Now I don't go too crazy with this. I just go to the legal limit. I don't wanna deal with the legal issues. And also if you go too dark, it's gonna compromise your safety when you're driving at night. But tinting your windows is a great idea for security purposes. On both sides of my truck, I have the fold down side steps from Amp Research. These things are great, especially on a tall truck like this. If I need to get up into my toolbox, this makes it a lot easier to get up and get to whatever I need to. These things are super sturdy, very convenient, and they also just fold right up out of the way when you're not using them. Moving here to the back of the truck, I have the Yakima Overhaul HD bed rack. This is a super heavy duty bed rack. It's also adjustable from 19 inches all the way up to 30 inches. So you can dial in that height for whatever you need. There's also a ton of accessories you can get with this. I have the HD crossbars that are supporting my rooftop tent, but I also have the sidebars that are give you a lot of capability for mounting things like traction boards, tools, fuel cans, or anything like that. I have done a full review of the Yakima Overhaul HD over on my other YouTube channel, and I will put a link to that right here at the top of the screen as well as in the description below. While we're over here on this side, let's take a look at the traction boards. There are a lot of different traction boards out there on the market at a lot of different price points. The most popular probably being Max Tracks, but after doing a lot of research, what I ended up with is the Action Tracks. And in my opinion, these are just as high quality as the Max Tracks, but the main reason I went with the Action Tracks is because they're made right here in the US. Now, if you wanna be prepared for emergency situations or if you're building out a bug out truck, especially if you find yourself stranded far from home, you need to be prepared to sleep in your vehicle. And there's no better way to do that than a rooftop tent. The one that I have here is the Nomadic 3 extended rooftop tent from Overland Vehicle Systems. This is a super high quality three to four person tent. And the Nomadic series from OVS, I think is some of the best out there at a very affordable price. I have done a full review of this rooftop tent if you wanna check that out. And if you've been looking for a good rooftop tent, I'll have a link to the tent down below as well. Here on the back end of the truck, again, I have the Stealth Series bumper from Road Armor. This is gonna help add a lot of protection to my truck, as well as give me the option of some additional lighting. So I have rigid reverse lights here in the back, as well as two more D-ring shackles for recovery. And I also do a lot of towing with this truck. And if you do any towing at all, you need to have a good hitch. The hitch that I have here is the BW Tow and Stow. And honestly, this is the last hitch I'll ever have to buy. It is a three ball. So I have one and seven eighths, two inch and two and five sixteenths. This hitch has a seven inch drop, but it's also a height adjustable. So I can adjust it to the size of whatever trailer I'm pulling. And if I'm not towing, you do have the capability of flipping this around to the back and stowing it away. So you don't have that shin buster sticking out when you're not towing. I also have airlift airbags installed in the truck. They give me the ability to raise and lower the back end of my truck to level it out when I'm towing heavy items. Also here on the bumper, I have an airline that runs back to my Viair onboard air system. I honestly think an onboard air system is a must for any prepared vehicle. It's going to give you the ability to quickly and easily reinflate your tires and get you back on the road in an emergency situation. The system I have is the Expedition Series from Viair. It comes with a compressor, a two and a half gallon air tank, air hose and all the accessories you need to inflate your tires. And I have all that mounted up under the body of the truck and wired to an upfitter switch so I can turn that compressor on and off. Now around here at the bed of the truck, I have the retractable tonneau cover from Truck Covers USA. This thing is awesome. It's super heavy duty aluminum tonneau cover that retracts into itself. So when this cover is fully open, you don't lose any bed space. And the biggest reason for that is because of the integrated toolbox. Now that was a huge selling point for me because I've always had toolboxes on my trucks and I didn't want to sacrifice that for a tonneau cover. And you don't have to with the All American Work Cover from Truck Covers USA. Now I'm gonna talk a lot more about the tonneau cover and toolbox when we get to part two of the series. But just to give you a little quick sneak peek, That's all there is to it. Now here's a look at the other side of those sidebars on the Yakima bed rack. 
This rack has T-channel routed all through it so you can add additional accessories. So right up here on this side, I have the Fisker's axe. I have that mounted to the bed rack with quick fist. Here on the other side, I just have a small shovel that comes in handy for a lot of different things. That's also going to be mounted with quick fist, but you can see right behind this on the outside is where I have my fuel and water can. So let's check that out. All right, guys, now moving around here to the other side of the bed rack, you can see up top, I have another product from Overland Vehicle Systems. This is their 270 LTE awning. This thing is great. You just unzip it and it swings out and around the back of the truck to give you a full 270 degree covered area. Then right down here below this, I have roto packs. And again, these are mounted to those sidebars on the Yakima Overhaul HD. And the first one I have here is the two gallon gas can from Rotopax. Right behind that is the two gallon water tank. Now there are a lot of different fuel cans and stuff like that out there, but the mounting capabilities of Rotopax is just unmatched. You can literally mount these things anywhere, whether it be to your bed rack, roof rack, inside the bed of your truck, on the back of your Jeep, really anywhere. And the Rotopax mounting system makes that really quick and easy. You just rotate that centerpiece and you can pull it right off. And finally, probably my favorite modification that I've done to this truck, especially when it comes to being prepared, is that I added a 58 gallon fuel tank from Transfer Flow. We all know there's no worse feeling than running out of gas and being stranded somewhere. And having backup fuel tanks like the roto packs mounted in your vehicle is a great option to help get you a little bit further down the road. But the more fuel you can have on hand, the better, especially in emergency situations where gas may not be readily available. Having 58 gallons of fuel in your truck could mean getting you twice as far in a bug out situation or keeping you on the road twice as long when everybody else is out of fuel. Before we get back to the video, I want to talk to you guys about prep with pilotpatriot.com. The world is in a fragile place right now and with gas and food prices rising and a looming food crisis, now is the time to prepare for more instability in the future. Now, do you have enough emergency food on hand to get you through severe shortages? The fact is that most people don't, and that's why I recommend My Patriot Supply. They are America's largest emergency preparedness company. Their food lasts up to 25 years in storage, so when you need it, it'll be there. And if you act today, you can save $150 on their three-month emergency food kit. You'll get three solid months of breakfast, lunch, dinners, drinks, and even snacks. So when emergencies and shortages happen, you won't go hungry when you have this emergency food. So go to prepwithpilotpatriot.com and save $150 on that three month emergency food kit. That's prepwithpilotpatriot.com and get your family's emergency food while you still can. So that's it for the outside of the truck. Now let's take a look at the inside at the truck EDC and all the stuff that I keep with me at all times. First, we'll take a look right here inside the driver's side door. In all four doors of my truck, I keep a water bottle and a koozie. Right beside that, I think it's nice to have a good bright flashlight. This is the Olight Marauder. It's a 7,000 lumen flashlight with several different modes. So not only is it a great light for regular flashlight things, but this could also be used as a search light as well. Always keep a set of gloves on hand for whatever you might need gloves for. Above that, I just have a nice affordable pair of binoculars. These are the 16 by 32 from Tasco. Also in this pocket, I just have a small pouch with some earplugs in it. You guys know I do a lot of shooting, reviewing guns. I also teach firearms training classes. So having some extra earplugs on hand um, is never a bad idea. Down here in this pocket is the good old beat stick. This is just for personal protection. It's something you can use in lieu of a firearm if you need a less than lethal option. Right beside that in this little pouch is just a standard poncho. And we don't get a ton of snow here in my area, but we do get one or two good snows a year as well as several icy days. So having a windshield scraper is nice to have. Now I warned you guys that my truck was dirty. This is my daily driver. This is my work truck. This is my everything truck. So this is what it looks like. Y'all try not to give me too much of a hard time for this, but all throughout the truck, I have floor liners from Husky liners. These things are great to help protect the floors of your truck and contain any of that dirt, mud, water, whatever might be on your shoes. And up here on these visors, I do have these visor covers, uh, just organizers for various different things. We'll take a look at these and I will have a link to these as well as everything else we're talking about in the description below. 
All right, so let's just go through here what I have on the driver's side. This is a rescue me tool. This has a glass breaker and seatbelt cutter. This is a must for emergencies and it just clips right here on your visor. And it's one of those things that you may never use, but if you find yourself in a situation where you need it, nothing else will do. Up above that, I just have this small red button light. This thing is nice to have. It has several different flashing options. And the main reason I have that here on my visor, if I find myself on the roadside changing a tire or something like that, and I just want to make sure I'm being seen, I can turn that flashing light on and then just put my visor down. And that way any cars coming from in front of me, this light will be shining through the windshield and they'll see that flashing light. I also have a Sharpie, a right in the rain pencil, a good old Bic lighter. Up here in this small pouch is some lock picks. Now, I'm not a criminal, but in an emergency situation or if you just lose the keys to a lock, that's nice to have and a great skill for when you need it. Also have a space pin, a small flashlight, a tire gauge, and this visor cover also came with a pretty cool little admin pouch. Has a spot here for you to put patches. Has a little clear window here. You can put pretty much anything you want. I just have a picture of my wife there because I like looking at her while I'm driving. And if you open that up, it gives you several spots there to put cards and things like that. And then just stuffed in here behind that visor cover, I have some maps of my area. And up here is just the upfitter switches for turning on and off all those accessories we talked about earlier, the onboard air, the fog lights, and all of that stuff. And then I also always keep an extra pair of sunglasses up here. Not as much going on here on the passenger side. Just have a small flashlight, Bic lighter, uh, a couple Sharpies, uh, that same red signal light, and a Rescue Me tool. Not a whole lot going on here in the console. I like to keep this pretty clear, uh, but down here in the side pouch, I have the Gerber Survival Knife. This is a really good all-around knife. It also has a hammer, a fire starter, a whistle, and a knife sharpener on it. So that's just a good all-around tool to keep with you for different situations. Up here in this little pocket, not a whole lot going on, just some gum, some different medicines, extra keys for my church. I do church security, so I need to keep those on hand. Uh, so nothing much going on in there. Now let's take a look here inside the center console. Again, a lot of your generic stuff. Have a little sticky notepad, a right in the rain notebook, some spare change, obviously, a uh, small knife sharpener, this giant chapstick here from Duke Cannon. Uh, I like to keep an extra cigar on hand. Me and my buddies like to smoke a cigar, so I keep one on hand just in case, along with a torch lighter and a cigar cutter. Some eye drops, uh, Tiger Bomb, fingernail clippers, and matches. You also notice that I have a console safe here. I like this one because it only takes up half of the console. This is there for obvious reasons, for firearms, money, that kind of stuff. And I've done a full review on this here on the channel if you want to check that out. This tray here does come out. Down inside of there, I have a digital night vision device. This is the NV100 from One Leaf. I've done a full review on that if you want to check it out. This is just a very affordable uh, night vision monocular. And I can think of a lot of situations where night vision could come in handy, especially in emergency situations. So I like to keep that here in the truck. I also have a small pouch in here that I just keep extra batteries. Um, I have CR123s, AA's, AAA's, and 2032's. This is going to keep me going for most of my flashlights, firearm optics, and things like that. Also down in here, I keep a couple decks of poker cards. I have two small Bibles, one for me and one to pass out to somebody else if I feel like it could help them. And also down in here, I have the charger for my two-way radios. I don't always keep those here in the truck. But anytime we're going on a trip or something like that, I'll throw them in here. Here on the top door of my console, I have this Molly panel from Built Right Industries. This thing is really convenient to help keep a few tools and things like that up and out of the way and securely mounted to the lid of your center console. So up here, I just have a backup pocket knife, a right in the rain pencil, a pen, uh, my Leatherman multi-tool, and a can of pepper spray. Uh, I like to keep this around. Anytime I'm going into a place uh, that doesn't allow me to have my firearm, I always stick this in my pocket. Uh, it's also nice to have if somebody approaches your vehicle and it's not really a situation where a firearm is appropriate, uh, but you still wanna be able to protect yourself, having a good pepper spray at hand is nice to have. Here on top of the dash, I have the Built Right Industries dash panel. 
this is awesome for attaching accessories like uh, phone chargers, GPSs, GoPros, things like that. Mounted up here, I have a wireless phone charger from IATI, and that's being held up by, by this little arm from 67 Industries. And also up here, it is winter time, so I keep a good pair of warm gloves on hand. Moving around here to the passenger side door. Again, I keep a water bottle and a koozie in every door of my truck. I also have sunscreen, bug spray, hand sanitizer, some working hands hand lotion, and back behind that is just a pack of wet wipes. And over here I have another flashlight. This is just an old Lux Pro that I've had for years. It's a really good light. I have another rain poncho here, and then a few packs of hot hands. Also here on the passenger side, I have this small storage area. Uh, inside of that, I have a little pouch just with extra phone charger cables and things like that. I have cables for all different types of phones. Uh, so no matter who's riding with me, I can charge anything. Also have a 20,000 milliamp hour solar power bank from Blavor. This thing is pretty cool. It does have a nice large solar panel here on one side, a uh, small compass, a wireless charger here on the back, a flashlight, and several different charging ports. And also down in here, just a little pack of tissues and then an extra pen and Sharpie. Down inside the glove box, um, obviously my owner's manual. I have the uh, controllers for my Road Armor winch mounted up on the bumper. And then an OBD link for checking codes if I get a check engine light uh, or for programming the Ford truck. Now let's move on here to the back seat. Here in the driver's side rear door, again, I have a water bottle and a koozie. I keep a cat tourniquet and a pretty extensive four person first aid kit uh, that I have added a lot of extras to so I can treat most anything that comes up. Here in the back of the driver's seat, I just have a standard umbrella, a road atlas, and another waterproof map of my area. And if you take a look over on the other side of the truck mounted to the sidewall, you'll see another glass breaker and seatbelt cutter. I have these mounted on both sides. This is just a standard emergency glass breaker and seatbelt cutter tool. But I wanted to make sure that every passenger of my truck had access to one of these. So I have these mounted here on both sides in the back of the truck. And then we have the rescue me tools up on the visors in the front. These F-250s have huge back seats with a lot of storage capability back here, but a problem that I have that probably a lot of you guys have too is car seats. I don't have access to a lot of the storage behind the seats and under the seats that I normally would have. So one really great solution that I found for having access to all of that under seat storage is this pull out storage drawer from DZ. This is lockable and accessible from both sides, so you can just pull this drawer out and access your underseat storage from the side here. I think this would be a great solution whether you have car seats or not, but especially if you have children and you have car seats in your vehicle, there is no better solution for underseat storage than a storage drawer like this one from DZ. Now we'll be doing a full video specifically on this setup, but let me give you a sneak peek of what I have here on this side. The, this is what I'm going to call my truck gun emergency response or active shooter kit. If I find myself in a situation where I think it might be necessary, where myself and a lot of other people are in danger, I want to be prepared and I want to have access to some of these items. I have a low profile plate carrier here from LA Police Gear. Uh, inside of that is the level 3 plus plates from Tactical Scorpion Gear. Also have the tactical respirator from Mira Safety. Uh, this is just a small respirator uh, with several canisters that are gonna protect you from tear gas and other gases like that, as well as a particle filter to protect you from bio-related things like diseases and stuff like that. Back behind that, I have a small pouch with a smoke and a pepper spray device. If I find myself in a riot or a large crowd and I just need to get out of that situation fast, um, having these things on hand could be helpful for that. And of course, what I think is gonna be my new go-to truck gun. This is the eight and a half inch Jackal from Palmetto State Armory with the folding pistol brace. I have the Hollow Sun 510C on there and this is chambered in 300 blackout. Now, of course, you are gonna to wanna to take a look at your local laws before you build out a kit like this for your vehicle. But if you are gonna be transporting something like this, you wanna make sure you have it in a quickly accessible but lockable container like that DZ storage drawer. Moving around here to the passenger side rear door, again, a water bottle and koozie. Um, I keep some trash bags in here just for regular cleanup. And then inside of this pouch here, 
is basically just an overnight kit. There's shampoos, toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, um, small first aid kit, uh, a few items for my wife there, and bar of soap, and that kind of stuff. And here in the passenger side rear, again, I have another car seat, uh, but in the back of the passenger seat, I have a few empty pouches. These come in handy for storing different things, but also have some youth size ponchos for the kids if they need that. Again, I have the glass breaker and seat belt cutter here mounted to the side. And again, I do have access to that DZ storage drawer here from this side too. And like I said, it is lockable. So let me unlock that. And not a whole lot going on on this side at the moment. I just have um, one of these extra little drawstring bags. Those can come in handy for a lot of different situations. But inside of that right now, I just have an extra change of clothes. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet, guys, and just a little bonus for y'all, I do recommend that somewhere on the outside of your truck or up underneath your truck, you mount some spare keys for your house, for your vehicle, for your toolboxes and all that stuff. That can definitely come in handy if you lose your keys. And there are a lot of products on the market that help you hide spare keys in different places. Now going right along with that, I definitely recommend somewhere on the inside of your vehicle that you hide some spare cash. If you were to find yourself in a situation where those cards just won't work, cash is gonna be your only option. So most vehicles will have little hiding spots and stuff like that and ways that you can hide some extra cash to get you by if you find yourself in that kind of situation. All right, guys, that is it for part one of the truck EDC and bug out truck series. We did a full walk around of the outside of the truck, took a look at all the accessories and modifications that I've done to this truck, as well as everything I keep on the inside of the truck for my EDC preparations. If there's anything you guys think I left out or things I need to include or things I should take away, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to get your input on that. And make sure you stick around for part two where we look at everything I have in the bed of the truck and the toolbox. That's where a lot of those emergency items, tools, recovery, all of that stuff is gonna be. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. So if you're looking for a way for your vehicle to be more prepared, so you can be more prepared for everyday life and emergency situations, I hope this video helped you out, guys. Don't forget, I will have links to everything we talked about today linked in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe, and stay prepared.